Okay, let's look at number four, your debt e equity ratio. I've written it all out. I'm just going to run through these key notes just as an explanation of what's going on there. So I'll do it like this. Keep trying to reinvent the wheel and do it different for each one. Okay, so debt equity, make sure there's a slash between because it's between the debt and your equity. That's actually the ratio there in the name. It does make it a bit easier for you. Then when you looked at mainly how the business is financed, where do they get their funds from? So there's two options. One can be the shares that they issue and they sell. And the second one is to borrow money. And that would be your loans. So you're going to look at these two options and see which side is weighted the most. And then you're going to make a comment on that. So let's look at when you do borrow money, the only difference between these two is you're going to have to pay interest. So on a monthly basis, there's a percentage that will be an expense that will have to go towards the bank or the financial institution that you borrow from. Where shares, other than that, there's no interest on them. You don't have to pay them back. As you get the shares and they stay yours, their capital within the business. If you are mainly using the funds from your shares, then you have to speak about a business that's at low risk. So when you comment on this ratio and it looks like the shares are the majority of your money, then it's a low risk. Okay, so what is the ratio? You're going to look at to what extent does the business finance their money by borrowing capital? To what extent does the business finance the business by borrowing capital? Okay, so the ratio is, like I said, what the name basically says. You're going to take your non-current liabilities, that will be on the left-hand side, and you're going to divide it by your shareholders' equity. So on the left-hand side, you're basically going to have your non-current, how am I going to say this, non-current liabilities, and you're going to put it against your equity. And then you're going to say, on your calculator this, divide it by this, and the answer always goes on the left, and on the right-hand side, you have the number one. Okay, so the opposite will be high risk when your money that you borrow is the highest. So you will look at your answer, and let's say your answer is 0 0.2 for one. That means your liabilities on the left are quite low. This is a low risk business. If you want a high risk business, then this will be 2.6 against one. You can see that your non-current liabilities is 2.6 times more than your actual equity. And this will be a high risk business. Very simple actually, just some fancy words in between. But something that comes up on the next page in your textbooks that does make it confusing is gearing. They might ask you about gearing and gearing is different than low risk and high risk. So you can talk about a business that's geared upwards, okay? And then the, just to say again, it doesn't relate to risk and especially not high risk. So you don't refer to the risk of the business to borrow more money in this instance. This is about gearing upwards. And what does that mean, okay? That means if you borrow money, you're going to pay low interest. So let's say your interest is 10% and your returns that you are making on your business is 20%. That's great. You're making enough money to cover your interest that you need to pay. So this is favorably geared. It's a happy face or you say it's geared upwards. So this company is in a position where they can go and borrow money because they can afford it. Their returns can cover their interest. Nothing to do with their risk. Keep that separate. Then you go to a company that's geared downwards or negatively geared. Doesn't have anything to do with a low risk. It refers to if your interest on your loans are quite high. So this enters, you're going to have to pay 12% interest on your loans and your returns are only sitting at 11%. Immediately, there's a warning sign. You can't cover these this interest with the returns that you're making. It's unfavorably geared. So maybe when you look at gearing, you can think of the interest. And when you're talking about risk and low risk, you look at the bigger picture, it's the actual loan against the equity. Okay, so this is number five, the next one. Return on total capital employed. 
just know that this one is directly related to the gearing that I just spoke about. The formula is quite complicated, but you don't actually have to study it. It is on your notes. I'll show it to you over here. It says here, net profit tax, before tax, interest, blah, blah, blah. Just be careful. There's another one that you might confuse it with. This one's after tax. We are now looking at this one specifically. Okay, so to, just to break it down a little bit more, all this rub out. What you're going to do now is you're going to look at the capital that you've employed, the capital that you've used, the total usage of your funds, and if you've done it efficiently. How are you going to do it? At the top, obviously, this number is going to come from your, I'm going to use it on this side. This number is coming from your income statement. So your income statement will show you close towards the bottom of the page, net profit before your tax is minus. And then you're going to add your interest on your loan back in. That's also very close to that answer. So you just need your income statement for this. And then at the bottom, you'll have your average capital employed. And this is the capital beginning of the year, end of the year, and divided by two. So for instance, they've used two, some numbers here to just give you an example. The net profit was 66. Your interest, it's in amounts of 12,000 Rand. And then those are your capitals. So your answer that you come up with is 30.6% because you times it by 100. What do you compare it with? What I mentioned in Gearing earlier is you go look at your interest rate on your loan. So your loan is 15% and now you are making 30.6% on your returns. So if you compare the two, is this business geared upwards or downwards? Upwards is in a good position, downwards is unfavorable. In this instant, it's upwards. Their returns look great. They can easily cover their interest. So the formula that they've given you, because you're putting the interest back, you can work out a percentage to see what your actual returns are. And that's it. So then you can do the next exercise.